Hey guys, Peter Harper, Managing Director and CEO of the Asina Family Office. For those of you who are not familiar with the business, we advise foreign family offices and founders on US direct investment and mergers and acquisitions. So what a start to uh, the year. It's kind of been, been pretty nuts. Um, albeit not totally unexpected, right? You know, as we're, we're thinking about, you know, the current shape uh, of the global economy and how it's, you know, impacting our clients and the decisions we're making. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting to look back at the timeline of events, right? So in, uh, in 2020, the Q1 2020, when the COVID pandemic was really kind of uh, getting started and launching, a lot of folks prior to that were saying that the world was generally due for a slowdown, due for, due for a, a, a technical recession, right? Uh, largely missed because of so much uh, fiscal stimulus was punch, pumped into the system. Um, uh, you know, re record amounts of money, easy money washing around, you know, facilitating these uh, crazy, you know, economic growth numbers um, uh, for a lot of businesses. And you know, for, for further facilitating, uh, you know, excess debt binges in all sectors, not just just technology, right? Um, you come through to you know twenty twenty two, as that stimulus starts uh, being unravelled um, due to you know war in Ukraine. And uh, you know, global economy is running too hot, right? Inf inflation being out of control, and you know, the Federal Reserve and, and countries around the world, you know, we're, we're going to start a process of quantitative tightening, right? Um, so you know, pr pretty simply, you know, we put a lot of fuel in the system. We're now going to start taking it out because we need to slow slow the the juggernaut down. Um, you know, which is what started happening. Interest rates started going up, right? Everyone was clearly understood that inflation was not transitory. Inflation was there. Um, and, and you know, uh, reserve banks around the world consistently moved to, to squash that with the main lever they have in their arsenal, which is interest rates. Um, and so, you know, in in 2022 was a pretty rocky year for a lot of folks, like growth was hard. Right. Some people were still making money. But as we entered in Q4, uh, it felt, you know, different, right? Everyone was still the kind of lagging indicators where the people, a lot of folks were still employing folks that were anchored towards the technology sector. Maybe there was, you know, we're seeing a lot more sort of layoffs than everyone. But I think that was really also an opportunity for a lot of people to, you know, make decisions around um, inefficient hiring that maybe that that had happened during COVID, right? And the and, and conditions were changing, right? So, leading into the end of the year, um, there are a number of factors that were starting to pointing towards you know major slowdown coming into Q1 of this year. Uh, you know, the, the if if you were to look at um, you know look at the numbers. Uh, being reported for service-based businesses, uh, you know, service-based businesses that are in many situations are kind of perceived as a canary in the coal mine. There are a lot of factors that were pointing to, you know, a major slowdown. M and A activity had kind of evaporated. Interest rates were continuing to to, to go up, um, and this notion of a soft landing just seemed like total nonsense, right? And you know, when I think about um, you know the state of the economy today. And when when you when you think his, about history and go back to 2008, the financial crisis and the, the flow on effect from that, I mean, I think a lot of people probably have you know this kind of a perma bear way of thinking. We're like, oh, okay, what's going to be the next thing, right? Well, you put a huge amount of capital, excess capital, into I illiquid private equity and venture capital markets, right? At zero interest rates, so you you go okay. This, these are generally high risk uh, investments anyway. Let's chuck chuck a bunch of leverage on it, right? And maybe maybe in businesses where 
it, quite frankly, it, you know, excess leverage did, doesn't make any sense because there's enough risk in there. Um, in an environment where, where there's no read to to mark to market, um, mark to market those investments, right? It, it, it felt like that was always going to be, you know, the 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 point for the the, the next or the the baseline for the next crisis, right? Um, you know, which it's which it's turning out to be, right? I think, but but I think the big thing. Yeah, and in the, the discussions that we're having with a lot of our clients, I think that kind of rings true. Is like you, you never let a good crisis um, go to waste, right? I, I think you know I, I felt this way uh, during COVID. Um, you know, asset prices have been out of control. Competition has been fierce. Uh, you know, people that maybe shouldn't be in business because they're they're you know not the best of their game. Uh, we're able to make it through the laissez fair of the government. Right, and that that should change, right? It should change, right? We need there to be some form of economic uh, slowdown for you know, asset prices to get under control and for uh, people to get back in the in the market to buy and sell stuff at reasonable prices, right? Hopefully that happens in the next six months. It's you're going to be kind of strap yourself in type stuff because it's going to be pretty crazy. Um, but the biggest kind of outlier in all this is you know is the fed gonna you know underwrite deposits you know all deposits for a period of time within the u.s right because if it is all it's going to do is make the inflationary issue even worse right we we underwrite and uh and say you know we're going to guarantee deposits you know what are those banks going to do those regional banks they're just going to go out and, and and lend more right so we probably need less liquidity in the market to get asset prices under control. That's going to be a really crazy dynamic uh, for a lot of folks if it happens. I hope that happens, right? Because I feel like we need a reset. Um, and I think that long term, that's better for everyone. Uh, but let's see. That's I mean, that's what people should be thinking about. If, if the government does, you know, again, puts on the quantitative e easing spigot again to, to spigot to resolve this issue you know various investments are going to look better than others um, you know if it doesn't it should be you know we it's time to go to work it's time to do the work and look at s stuff uh, in your business and in the market that makes sense in 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 that environment asset prices will come down there should be good deals out there um, if you're on the hunt and you're doing the work right so we're, um, you know, we're 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 concerned about the market, but we're excited because, uh, you know, with all these diff different things, um, you know, awesome opportunities should present themselves. Cheers.